Hello, welcome back to Serious About Rugby League. Today we're going to be discussing another thing that's been doing the rounds. It's been a bit farcical in the last few weeks with uh, players going from one club to another. Uh, currently teams can buy, sell and trade players until, I think it's the 9th of August, isn't that right yeah. guys? Yeah, the 9th of August. Uh, we've had some chaos issues with Leeds, the parcel, the whole parcel incident. Like the Levette going to Hull KR. Uh, Leeds brought in a few players, the Watkins it, it, going across across to Australia. Well, what, I think what people say, should, should we have a transfer window a la what they have in football? What do you think, Jack? I'd say yes. Why not? I think it could work well. Um, I think it would it'd bring in a lot of structure as opposed to, well, let's be honest, a bit of a free-for-all. Mm -hmm. You know, you see the amount of transfers that are um, in and out of clubs. No, no one knows whether a deal's on loan, whether it's permanent, whether it's to the end of the season, whether it's for this year, whether it's for next year. Um, you know, it, it, it's all over the place at the minute. You, you look at teams like you mentioned Hull KR, they brought in four players yeah. um, for this season and have said that they want to bring in more. Um, Leeds have now got a squad of 42, well, they're up to squad number 41 after signing Reese Martin. It's just a bit, it's a bit all over the place and um, it, it's quite it's funny really. I was looking at um, some squads bizarrely from I think about 2008, um, just yesterday. And just seeing how sort of small the squads were at that time, I think most teams played with maybe max 28, 30 players. Whereas now, you like like yeah. I said, you've seen, well, Wigan have done it, Leeds have done it, 40-odd players. Um, it's just getting a bit ridiculous, I think. So I think if we could structure it a bit better, so you know you maybe have two months at the end, of, sort of over Christmas, maybe at the end of the season, mm -hmm. um, before the new season, um, with a transfer window for players to be signed and deals to be finished. Um, and that no, maybe a month in maybe June or July yeah, for teams that are maybe thinking they make a few changes for injuries. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like a bit, maybe a bit weaker in some areas, might want to strengthen then. That'd be fair enough. But I think it's a bit, it's a bit all over the place at the minute. So I think it could potentially work well. And they'll go over to Sean. Like, I'm sure it used to be the end of June. Was it, that, that used to have a cut up then? Up to mm. a couple of years ago. I'm not quite sure when this come in. Would, would you, do you agree with Jack there? Would you have a transfer? No, I, I feel like. Uh, you, we, a lot of people go, oh, this, this is what we do in this sport and this sport. You, you've got to think of it independently. And I don't think that a transfer window would suit the way that rugby league works with with the with the turnover being so fast. Um, obviously, in football, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a massive separation between between like the domestic team season and the international season and the start of the next domestic season. Um, and you can't really compare that because in rugby league, it's completely different. There's almost mm -hmm. no time. Like By the time the international season's finished, the pre-season for the domestic season's already yeah. started. So, you can't really compare the two, and I feel like you're going to give coaches a problem. If you're going to stop the transfer window before the season starts, you're going to give coaches a problem where they've not seen all the players because the players are in international duty, and they've come back, and they might feel like they're short, but they've not been able to work it out because they've got four players missing because they're on international duty, and then they're coming back two weeks late. So, you're not really giving coaches the time, and it's a bit that would be cause a bit of a stress. I think a one month period in the middle is then pointless I, as, as such, because then you then you sort of asking for people to trade players. Like at the minute, realistically, other than maybe a four or five a season, you don't see trades. You see mm -hmm. agreements for next season. Mm. So what's a, what's a mid what's a mid season transfer window going to do other than allow teams the thought that. Oh, we need to trade some players because we need to like get new players in because we're not going well. well. That's the way you um, see. I think it can be worked quite smart. You know, teams that after there's no pressure on teams to recruit. No, I'm not saying there, there is. I'm not, I'm not saying there is. I'm just saying that that will it will create an element that if they they do it, we should do it. If the, and, and teams will do it to to the benefit. So every uh, if not maybe not first year, but four or five years down the line, you will see teams just trading to try and get one up. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, what's the point when you've got a system in at the minute that the majority is agreements for next season, not so much this season? But I think it'd be. I think what it'd do, though, is it'd force teams to be smart about the moves. I think there's a lot of, um, I think team teams and sort of bo chief executives, boards, etc., tend to be a bit relaxed on the whole recruitment scenario. I think, especially looking at the championship and League One, like I know you mentioned um, the cut-off date now, the the deadline day has been extended to um, 9th of August, That's I, I think I read that that is because of, um, at the end of the last season we saw in, I think it was the Championship Shield Grand Final between, was it Lee and Featherstone, 
was it Liam Featherstone? Yes. Yes. Lee, 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 Lee were definitely. Yeah, it was this yeah. Championship Shield, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and they, they, they had. Yeah. Um, didn't have a team, did they? No, no ne- ne- they. neither team could, were able to field a full 17. I think they ended up getting eight or nine emergency yeah, loans did, yeah. from here, there, and everywhere. Bad for the sport, it was. Exactly, yeah. and then and I know there were a couple of teams as well that were a, a very short on players, but I think if we had a transfer window, that you know, a dedicated transfer window, that would then. It forced teams to be smart about what they did with the players mm-hmm. and have and be, and be stricter on contracts. Yeah. Um, you know, you look at teams like uh, uh, Rochdale, for example, mm. who are constantly dipping in and out of um, the the um, amateur player pool. There, they've recruited a, a fair few players from uh, Rochdale Mayfield this season. Yeah. Um, they're constantly switching up players and and, and their team. Mm. Um, I don't think they've had um, a consistent seventeen at all this season. Um, and it it take that element away of you know fans turning up to grounds not knowing who's going to be playing, yeah. you know not not sure which you know if they're going to have some mystery bloke from the amateur game or uh, someone dual reg. You know I think it 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 it'd clean it up a lot. I think is is it, sort of the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. I think that'd be good for the I th- game. I think you've got, you've you've got to separate Super League and Championships in a sense in that sense that the Championship clubs that are semi pro you wouldn't expect. In other sports, for semi-pro clubs to n- not be able to do that sort of I thing. Think, I think in football mm, itself, I the, the football itself, I think the championship clubs can go on after. Yeah. After, after all, there, there, there is a certain, there is a certain um, and, and maybe this is something that we need to think about as well. Is a bit of a compromise mm. of not necessarily just completely shut off all transfers either side of the window, but maybe allow for some maybe dual reg or loan or yeah. something like that, which is like you said in the football. Yeah. Which that's what they do, but. Let's sort of mention this. So let's, I'm more interested, for really, in this 9th of August deadline. Like, it's gone from July. We've got something okay, more on this. So, so I'll just read this from Sam. This is Sam Allen, the RFL's head of professional operations. He said it's simpler to explain and hopefully to understand as the signing as the same signings deadlines will apply to all competitions and the rules around dual registration have also been simplified. Having the cut-off dates for new signings and dual registration qualifications later in the season will give clubs greater flexibility to manage their squads, while remaining sufficiently in advance at the end of the season to avoid undermining competition integrity. I get that, but, I mean, you the 9th of August, you're looking yeah, at the team have three or four games to I play? Th- I think... Is that too soon? Yeah, at the end of that statement, sort of, it's sort of contradictory, because he says, mm. without undermining a competition, the competition's integrity, but... It does undermine the competition's integrity. It has, it has to, surely. Look, look what, what day are we on today? The 2nd... 3rd of Ju- 3rd July. 3rd of July. July, sorry. So, we're on the 3rd of July, and this weekend, we've got a, a crunch weekend where there's four teams on the same amount of points. Mm. And somebody's got to move off off that yeah. off that section, so who's it going to be, sort of thing. like. But people are still making changes to the squad, so it's mm. clearly it's clearly affecting the competition, yeah. with it being so late. Like you said, the 9th of August, there's, there's going to be, what, five games left, four games mm. left? So how is that not... Like, mm-hmm. This is the point in the season where everything changes. Realistically, the deadline should be in the middle of June, where you can just go, right, that's it, we're done. You can sort, you can still sort your, your, your next season transfers out after the season's yeah. finished. Yeah. But oh, you could to be, to be fair, I wouldn't mind the period going on to allow for signings for next season, because I don't really care about that. Mm. It's, just, it's the trading deals that happen... Up until Mid-season, this point. yeah. And it's like, well, it, I think the yeah, middle of June would be a smarter date because you're about halfway through the season and there's still a lot of to be played. Just, just, just quickly moving on to this, we mentioned next season. I think there's a lot, a lot of controversy about players who have signed for clubs for next season. I don't think anyone has a problem with that. I think the, 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 the debate about whether players should be done in the top... I don't guess that... I you, don't think they should be. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's no. wrong. Well, I'm, I, I not long ago talked to um, an agent called David Howe, so he's, yeah. he's um, Hull-based and he manages a lot of the... Um, like he manages Gareth Ellis yeah, yeah. Um, and Scott Taylor and people out there. And I remember him saying to me that um, when Ellis was at Wakefield and before I signed for Leeds, he could have signed for Bradford, yeah. but he would have had to stay at Wakefield for another year. And that's difficult for a player because once you've signed for a different club, it's never the same. You know, you're there playing for this club. I mean, you constantly say it's um, oh, I can't think of the word now, but it's um, you, you've got a disagreement with yourself. Like we look at Tim Sheens, a couple of. There's a completely different sort of point now, but you look at um, no, no, it's, it's when, it was, kind of when, when it was when it was the million pound game, Salford versus Hull KR, and he'd already signed on as Hull KR yeah, coach crazy. when he was playing for Salford. So you've got that conflict of interest. That's the word I was trying to. That's yeah. the phrase I was trying to think of but um 
you know, that nothing can, in terms of players on the holding flip, up opposition on, on shirts. The, on it's... the flip side, I want to you bring in Jordan Abdul at, at Leeds this year, who was the best player at Leeds London. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was the best player in the, the London Hockey Air game, the best player on the pitch by a country mile, and he signed Hockey Air next year. So the, the, clear, there's clearly mm. not that much of a conflict in, in his head. There's clearly not that much yeah. conflict. Because he, he wants to do what's best for the club that he's playing for, and that's what he's paid to do. I, 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 I think most fans don't have a problem, but I think. I think uh, I think because we're, we're all we don't think the players should be wearing the shirts of the unveiled wearing the shirts of the team they're going to play for next season. Mm. Oh, uh, I think that's that's a massive. That's a step too far, isn't it? Yeah, and I think Castleford have, have had sort of uh, an impact to that because I feel like Mitch Clark, Mitch Clark hasn't got as many minutes since he unveiled himself as, yeah, uh, no, he as a Wigan player, and yeah. I think there might be a little bit of a stigma. There. I don't think Daryl Powell was very happy with the way it was handled, mm. Uh, mm. and mm. The, that that's caused a bit of a problem in the Castleford ranks as yeah. well. So I, I do think that's it. The, the unveiling should have come after the season's finished. So do we think this gives the the, the transfer one as it is now? Do we think it gives the bigger clubs the edge because they obviously you know a few, few injuries at Wigan or Leeds they can they can go straight in for a, a replacement whereas the smaller clubs might struggle. Do we, do we think it gives them the edge? Perhaps. But this is why I, I think a transfer window would even it all out yeah. without a doubt. Um, you know we've mentioned the deadline um, and stuff like that, and I've, you know, I've mentioned clubs being complacent with their squads, and I do think it. Make it a, maybe a bit fairer, mm-hmm. but I think in in you know overall, I think the point I've, I've made is that it would just clean it up a lot more and make it much less confusing and force teams to manage their assets and their players uh, better. Yeah. I think this would have um, a massive you know this could be something that's brought up as part of the reserves debate. Mm-hmm. You know teams yeah. then using as opposed to maybe um, you know I mean Hull KR instead of you know, if they if they're struggling. Just for t- you know to get a seventeen together, um, as on a Wakefield, I've done at one point this season. Yeah. Then why not? Why you know why try and suddenly panic buy and look? Oh, is he, we can get him on loan. We can get him on a permanent. You know, dip into your resources. If you're backing your reserves or your academy yeah. so much, then use them. Yeah, that's what they're there for. Yeah, Wakefield reserves team. Use them. Yeah. Well, that's what they're there for. Surely that's why they're in the reserves. Um, exactly. It, do, do you think this system is it going to be clubs or? Um, I'm sort of the opposite view in that I think we should stay, but the deadline needs to be brought backwards to about mid-season. So about yeah. halfway through the season, bang on. So when about would you look at? Um, Did you say mid-season? Start, start, mid, start That's where mid-season. it was. Like I said, funnily enough, that is where it was. I think when I spoke to David Beaumont at Leeds, I think he said a few years ago, 2-23rd, something if, like if that. There's, if there's 29 games a season, and obviously we don't know what the structure is going to be next year or anything, but it's, if we're assuming that we're going to keep the same structure and there's 29 games. I think that's an all, all another podcast, that I one. think um, it should be after the 14th game. So you've got the second half been, of the season. That would have been six mm. weeks ago then. Yeah. Um, that's... So what about yourself? Would you, would you have the transfer window? Would you um, more on I would have said? a transfer window. I think there's um, a lot of leeway in terms of compromising. You know, maybe if we're yeah. talking about getting players for the season after, then sort of you know that. But I think if we're talking mid-season and getting players in, as in like now, mm-hmm. then I think we should have a, a transfer window. Probably, I'd probably say June. I've appeared. I've, I've the month of June. For teams to identify the areas where they need to strengthen, I still think the energy is too late. Though, I, f- I feel like last week was a, was the was the week that the the whole relegation fight sh- shook up, and it was all because of trades that teams had done. So, so just as clapper, so, uh, you you would have more of a football system where you'd shut off mm-hmm. in February when the season starts. You're like, well, maybe it's wait till the end of February. Shut it off after that, and then just literally open it for three or yeah. four weeks in June. Whereas you yourself would probably yeah, say, push keep it, it open yeah. till June. And that's obviously that's what it's good to have a different opinions from the guys. Um, love to know what you think. Obviously, leave your leave all your suggestions in the comments. Uh, there's there's no right and wrong answers on this. Everyone deserves an opinion. Again, hit the like and subscribe button, and hit that notification bell, and you'll get more of these uh, videos sent to your inbox.